12 years ago, I made a surprising career decision. I decided to leave my career as theatre company artistic director, actress and drama teacher. I wrote, starred and produced plays about women in historical Japan, exploring their journeys as they overcame cultural and personal barriers to find their personal paths. I really enjoyed my work, and I'd always wanted to work as an actress. And yet, for some reason, I decided I wanted to try something different. I had an opportunity to coach a senior executive in communication skills, and that gave me the inspiration to move into the world of corporate learning and development. Now, as the Japan partner for Lumina Learning, I work with teams and leaders in global organizations, supporting them to be better communicators, to be more authentic, and to manage diversity better. I've worked with many women at all levels, from senior to students, supporting them to have the courage and confidence to step up to leadership. This is something that I'm particularly passionate about. It's very clear that women still are not equal when it comes to leadership roles in society. And so there's a long way to go for government and organizations to change the infrastructure to make it more equitable for women's career paths. But that's not why I'm here today. There are also many studies on all the ways in which women hold themselves back in fulfilling their potential. I believe it's essential that we step up and be a part of the change. So today, I'd like to share with you four qualities that will help you to be more active in building your life and your career path. I call them the four C's. They are compassion, control, courage, and confidence. The four C's are all interconnected and they all support each other. The concepts are simple but they do require practice in order that you can use them when you need them most. Compassion. What is compassion? It means to show kindness, caring, and a willingness to help others. The Dalai Lama in his book, The Art of Happiness says, if you want others to be happy, practice compassion. If you want to be happy, practice compassion. Being self-compassionate is really important because without it, it's very difficult for you to feel that you are worthy and deserving of success. A few years ago, I coached a woman who was terribly tough on herself and on others. She had many achievements and successes, and yet she would always, always say things like, I only got 95% on that exam. That was not good enough. I'm a failure. As a child, she had had a parent who was a constant critic. As an adult, she still heard that voice inside her head. In other words, she had a huge critic, inner critic, that judged her constantly. I'm happy to say that gradually over time she did learn to value herself and others more and to show more compassion for herself and others. So I'd like to ask you, how much are you able 
to acknowledge and celebrate your successes. Perhaps you too secretly feel that you're really a failure and that you need that inner critic to push you to keep trying harder. Practicing self-compassion will make you have a much more positive belief in yourself. It will allow you to celebrate your successes while forgiving your failures. It will also help you to be more compassionate and understanding of others. So practice the skill of self-compassion. Say to yourself, I know that I am good enough as I am. I am deserving of success in my life and career. Control. There's some very interesting research now on the connection between personal control and motivation. Charles Duhigg, who's a reporter for the New York Times, recently wrote a very interesting book on productivity. In the chapter on motivation, he says, when you believe you are in control, you are more motivated. In order to be motivated, you must feel that you are in control. When you feel that you're in control of what you're doing, you tend to be more confident and overcome setbacks more easily. You see yourself in the driving seat rather than life being something that happens to you. So, I'm going to show you now a picture of my mother. <laughs> Why am I showing you a picture of my mother and how does that connect to control? This is a photo of my mother on holiday in South Africa, staying at my sister's house. My mother is 96 and she still plays the oboe, she plays in orchestras and she teaches music. She's my role model for personal control. Because at 96, she still makes decisions on how she will live her life. And she chooses what she will and she won't do. When I was a child, my mother allowed me to take, make choices for myself. If I wanted to study, that was OK. If I didn't want to study, that was OK too. Whatever was on my yearly report card, it was fine. Even when I had 12% on my maths test. I bet you wish you'd had a mother like that. When I was 16, I wanted to go to the Sorbonne University in Paris and study for a couple of months. She let me make that choice too. And when I said I wanted to be an actress, there was no advice about, oh, that's a bad choice. You'll starve to death. Why don't you make a more sensible career choice? At the time, I took it for granted that I could make choices for myself. Now I understand what a wonderful gift she gave me. She empowered me to make decisions for myself. And I always knew that whatever choices I made, she would support me even when I made mistakes. So I'd like you to reflect on how much personal control do you take in your life? What are the situations in which you make choices about what you will or won't do? So practice the skill of personal control and say to yourself, I am an intelligent and educated person. I am capable of choosing for myself what I want to do with my life and career. Courage. Courage. It's about admitting that we have fears 
and still being willing to have a go and try something that we feel uncomfortable about doing. You will feel discomfort as you step outside of your usual safe comfort zone. But stepping outside your comfort zone is the only way you can develop yourself. And courage is a lifelong journey. It took courage for me to start my own business at a time when other people were thinking about retiring. And it still takes courage every week as I grow my business. And the bigger it grows, the more I may fall. And if I fail, there is no safety net. In your lives, you will need a lot of courage. William Saito, who is special advisor to the cabinet office of the government of Japan and an entrepreneur and an author, warns that by 2025, 65% of jobs as we know them will be gone. So you will have no lifetime employment. You face having to change jobs several times in your career and probably having to change careers several times. You'll have to try doing work that you've never done before. Perhaps to start a business or become an entrepreneur. William's advice is to fail fast, fail often, fail early, and most importantly, fail forward. What that really means is to keep on trying many things until you find success or you find what you are looking for. And that, of course, takes courage. So it's really important for you every single day to practice the skill of gaining more courage. So say to yourself, I am afraid of trying that new thing and I will have a go. Even if I fail, it will be a good learning experience and I will gain courage to try again. Confidence. Confidence is a feeling, a belief, or a consciousness in our ability and our power to handle something. Let's talk about strengths. How self-aware are you about your strengths? And how willing are you, how comfortable are you to talk about your strengths? Perhaps it's easier to say, oh, no, no, I'm very weak at that. Oh, uh, I'm, I'm, very, I'm not so good at this. Oh, perhaps I need to work harder at that. It's a leadership and a success must to be clear on your strengths and to leverage them to the full. Take a look at these luminous spark strengths. Which of them resonate with you? Perhaps you're collaborative and a good team player. Or maybe you're better at taking charge. What about these strengths? Maybe you're good at giving really practical advice. Or perhaps you're imaginative and great at coming up with ideas. Which two or three of those strengths are yours? The ones that you use naturally at home and at work, and maybe the ones also you consciously choose to use. They're not better or worse. The strengths are all just different from each other. And organizations today, more than ever, need lots of diverse strengths to drive innovation. So, it's really important for you to be clear on your strengths and value them rather than focusing on your weaknesses. Another way of building our confidence is to consciously use our body language 
to positively influence our thoughts and feelings. Perceptions drive us to categorize each other in less than 150 milliseconds. And in less than 30 minutes, we've made lasting judgments about each other's character. Those judgments are mostly based on what we see and hear. In other words, our body language and our voice. So for instance, if I show body language like this, if I say, oh, I'm very happy to be here today. Um, thank you, it's a pleasure to speak to you. Maybe you're thinking, whoa, she doesn't look very confident. She can't be much of a leader. But if I use body language more like this, it's a great pleasure to be with you here today and to talk with you. Perhaps you're thinking, oh, she looks confident. Maybe she's a leader. So start practicing using more confident body language in everything that you do. When you walk in the room, walk in with your head held high, take up more space, use your eyes to connect with people. When you do that, not only will you become more confident, but you will seem more leader-like. And say to yourself, I will step up and aim for the career I want. I will look confident and I will be confident in my strengths. The four C's, they're compassion, control, courage, and confidence. They are all within your reach. Envision the career you want and bring it to life. It's time to take action. Thank you.